I don't think it's actually good for you as a maker. Consistency is key in this business. Because nobody will just do the work for you, they want to work with you. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, in the Martin Huber talk show, we have a special guest from down under and kind of north from me, Peter from Modern Cooking. <laughs> So, welcome Peter to the Martin Huber talk show at the first episode of the Martin Huber talk show because this is the Martin Huber talk show. So, in the Martin Huber talk show we bring famous knife makers or in this special episode today we're gonna bring one of my knife dealers to this talk show. So, but um, Red Bull's gone, so beer boy! Thanks, Johannes. So, Peter, you are the founder and owner of Modern Cooking. So, how did this all start? Like, what did, you, what made you want to sell knives? Uh, it's actually quite a long story. Um, basically, when I came to Europe about 12 years ago now, I had no idea what I was going to do here. And so I decided to do my master of business. And during that phase of my life, I kind of decided I wanted to do something on the side with e-commerce. And I had this idea to kind of do the like Amazon of recipes or something in this direction where you could buy like individual recipes from a cookbook on a website and kind of build your own cookbook and also have it printed from the site. It's kind of a personal you know, cooking adventure thing for yourself. And I took it and shopped it out to a few VCs and a few of them were like, yeah, it's kind of nice, but like, yeah, no. Nobody and pulled the trigger. What's that? Nobody pulled the trigger. Nah, okay. nah, yeah. it was like close. Some guy offered me 10 grand, but that wasn't going to get it there. And uh, yeah. And then I was like already at a phase where I had modern cooking. I had a website built for it and I had a few kind of products on there. And I was like, okay, what am I going to do with this? And uh, before all of this had happened, I'd been a chef for many years, worked in some high-end restaurants, and I still really love cooking. In Sydney? In Sydney, Australia, yeah. Because he's an Aussie mate. And so knives are naturally something I've always really loved. I bought my first hand-forged knife when I was like a third-year apprentice or something like this. 700 Australian dollars. It took me about two hours of standing in the shop, like it's going, basically oh like my God, euros. I really want this knife. I really want this knife. I can't afford this knife. And yeah, three months of saving and I finally bought that knife. So 700 Australian, that's pretty much like something around two euros. It's like 350 or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a Shigeki Tanaka uh, full tang ironwood handle. I love that knife. I still have it today. Um, and he was actually the first blacksmith I ever met, um, over in Japan. And I visited his shop and like, just thought the whole thing was cool. Um, I've also spent a lot of time in manufacturing, so I really enjoy the processes of knife making and, you know, seeing how they all come together. I appreciate efficiency and, you know, organization and all that kind of stuff. Um, so seeing a knife maker work and seeing a knife come from a piece of steel and some bits of wood come together is just fascinating for me. Um, and so I actually started dealing Japanese knives on the website at that stage um, and built some contacts in Japan and started importing them. But that was always very businessy. Um, I mean, what I mean by that is that it was like contact an intermediate dealer in Japan. They would say, we've got this, that, and the other for this price. I say yes or no, they ship the knives. That's the end of the relationship. And I found that kind of dull, to be honest. And very quickly, I also noticed that in Japanese knives, it's kind of a very commodity business. Um, lots of price competition, a lot of very good stores all around the world selling them and so it's like what one store has, the next store also has, which I kind of found a little dull also. Um, so after three or four years of doing that, one of my good customers actually reached out to me and was like, I love what you're doing. I love the site. 
um, you know, you're bringing some really great knives from Japan, but have you thought about working with European makers? You're in Europe and there's a ton of amazing makers there. And I kind of thought, yeah, actually. And at that time, I didn't know of any other stores really doing it. And so I thought this is an opportunity for me to kind of carve out a little niche for myself and, and do something unique and special. Um, and so <laughs> funny, because he's such a big shot, but Benjamin Kamen was like the first guy I contacted. <laughs> I was like, you know, on Instagram, hey man, you want to sell some knives with me? <laughs> and he was super cool and just straight away was like, yeah, I'd love to have a dealer in Europe. I've got tons of customers here, but I only sell in the US at the moment. Um, and so that's kind of where it all began. He sent me two knives, uh, one of which was, I think the first and only integral he's ever made. Um, and he was like, oh, I hope you can sell them, man. Anyway, I put them on my site and within like 20 minutes, they were both gone. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, hello, I'm onto a good thing here. Um, one of them went off to Hong Kong and one went to Australia, which was pretty cool also. Um, so like you, you, you wanted to build a shop in Europe and sold both of the first Western knives like this. everywhere else <laughs> yeah, exactly that was yeah and that kind of went against what ben was sort of looking for as well people listening to this and wanted to do something as well this is just luck <laughs> probably yeah probably. i mean actually yes because i've spoken to a lot of other shops since who have said oh i'd love to get involved with these makers and i tried and it didn't work so i'm really kind of blessed in that way um But I think like retrospectively, that was my manufacturing ba background that kind of really helped with the connection because I had a true understanding of like what these guys do to make these knives and the work that goes into them. Um, and we could talk about that rather than the end piece just being like this super cool thing on its own. It was the whole picture. Um, so yeah, from there, I think Jonas was the next guy that came onto the site, um, Isa Smejan. Um, and then very soon after, Martin Huber was with me. And from there, it just kind of snowballed into this big thing and suddenly, you know, 10,000 followers and yeah, lots of cool projects later, here we are. So yeah, that's We're the story. We're working now together for four three years, three or four years. years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So time flies when you're having fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> of course we're not having fun. <laughs> But it's not true because we're not having fun. <laughs> so, Never. Ever. <laughs> no, no, we, we just spent the last three days having our annual yearly Kiridashi day. This is a thing that we did now for the third time. Yeah. And because it was, we first met, I think, one year after we started working together. Pretty much, yeah. October of 22? Yeah. 22? No, 21. 21. 22. Okay, I'll go with you. 22 you no, we started working Two, together three, 21, yeah yeah you're 22, right you're 20, right you're yeah. right and he visited and he's like yeah i'm gonna spend like two three days here because you then you had a small little austria tour if yeah i, I think correctly. so yeah you went to the bias hunger and to, to ben as well yeah yeah and he's like yeah if you're down i'm like gonna spend like two two days in your shop and i'm like yeah And basically the first day we just spent talking and having I think fun. we had plans to make and like we, some fancy Giotto or yeah, something we wanted together. To do some, we, we tried to do the first MCX series together. Something like, like this. Like three years ago <laughs> when MCX was in the beginning or... Yeah, like I just the, started it with Frederick, I think. I think I think it was right when, when Frederick did the first batch and it wasn't even official yet. Something like this, yeah. yeah. But yeah, and we just did talk for a whole day. Like... Yeah. What's up with you? What's up with me? So learning, uh, getting learning to about know each, each other, other yeah. personally. And <laughs> the next day was just like, a, oh, it's two in the afternoon. We should do at least something. Yeah. And basically this is how Kiridashi Day started. So if you watch this right now, the Kiridashi video should be online already. No. So link down in the description below. Yeah. So the viewers of course asked on instagram the second question is what are your yeah it's getting pretty cold yeah. we started a little late uh because it's like seven in the evening right now so it's getting a little dark so sorry for the bad quality video this time but yeah <clears throat> so what was your favorite project of modern cooking like the favorite part of modern cooking that you did so far 
I mean, it's definitely the collaborative projects. Um, and it's, it's a couple of things with that. It's firstly the opportunity to like get behind the scenes and kind of understand what's going on there and create something unique. Um, I speak to a lot of the enthusiasts that, that buy from my shop and we always talk about what's interesting. And so it's quite cool to take that feedback and try and develop a project around it. I also kind of have a passion for producing knives that are kind of for the people and a little bit more moderately priced. And so uh, those kind of projects tend to be, yeah, somewhere, you know, in the lower, lower kind of, I guess, 700, 500, even down to 300 euros um, and larger batches. And it's an opportunity to kind of, I guess, get people interested as well. I so that's always cool. I think the prime example for this is Birch and Bevel. Birch and Bevel yeah. and the MCX line. I mean, those knives were once called the unicorn knife. And yeah, it's for a good reason. They're readily available and they're you know, something that people can just say, yeah, 300, 500 bucks, I can afford that easily now and not a thousand, two thousand, three thousand and up like this. Um, so yeah, basically those projects are, are where my heart lies with it all. Mm. Um, but of course, you know, it's always amazing when, for example, you and Ben do a project like the full tang knives you made um, and I get to have, a, have one of those pieces in my shop and see what you guys can really do when you like take all the time in the world and kind of remove the limits together and, and just do what everybody can. Yeah. And I think actually the big thing with collaborations also is that it produces ultimately a very unique piece, something, you know, when it's a Martin Huber knife, it's like, that's what you're doing all the time. But when you team up with another maker and you kind of put your skills together and your styles together, what comes out of it is usually something very special. So that's, yeah, that's what it's all about for me. I mean, in the, especially in the collectors scene, you're known for these kind of collabs because yeah. you're one of the only shops worldwide that I know of that really takes the time, talks to many, like we had a load of conversation about these kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, like, hey, you want to do this or that with him? Yeah. Or, hey, he wants to do a collab with you. Uh, Maybe like, let's get together in a video call or something like this, talk about all this stuff uh, and let's see what you two can do together. And we're gonna pimp it up and bring it to a modern cooking exclusive. And that's what I really appreciate about the work that you do. Yeah. I think I wanna say two things about that as well. I feel like that those collaborations have really brought the European community together. And the community is something very special. I think like we get together as friends quite often and you know that's that's something unique and it's really in stark contrast to my experience working with the japanese where they're very isolated in fact on visits there it's been quite a situation where you know don't talk about other makers when you're visiting one maker or the other because they're so competitive and so isolated and so insecure about their trade secrets and so on. Whereas here it's a lot of sharing and a lot of innovating together. And I feel like that's really special. It got a pretty dark right now. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought, like maybe get the lamp out. <laughs> I think it's working. I think it's working. You too. can see us, right? <laughs> this is uh, like, by the way, this is fully uncut. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I, get, I, I hope so. So you get the full real experience. <laughs> well, so a question that I get actually mm -hmm. pretty often, especially when you post something that we did together mm -hmm. is from knife makers in, in general, uh, they wanted to know like, how do I get to start with somebody who sells my knives? Like how do I, how can I start with modern cooking that he like sells my knives? It's a tough question. I gotta be honest. Um, I really like to work, as, as I've pointed out, I like to work with guys who are willing to collaborate with me and be open with me about, you know, everything from, you know, I need to make this kind of money for it to be cost effective for me, for me um, to, you know, what kind of projects do I think will work on my shop. Um, so that kind of things is super important. I think professionalization being being very professional 
I don't really want to work with one-offs. Um, so, you know, if it's like, if you're looking for sort of one piece every blue moon, then that's not really interesting for me. I don't think it's actually good for you as a maker either. Um, consistency is key in this business. Um, those things are very important, but I would just say, reach out to a, a store that you like, keep an open mind, be willing to make compromises um, and work with that store because in the end, you know, not all of us are just kind of, you know, out for a quick sale. Um, and yeah, that's another thing. Look for, look for a retail partner that is just going to support your business and, and look after you as a maker and hopefully prosper together with you. That's actually one of the things that we had on our first conversation. Yeah. Like, you asked me the question uh, when we first had our, our first phone call. Mm. You called me and were like, okay, so do you want to do this in the long run? Or yeah. do you want to just do it? Because back in the days, like four years ago, I, I was honored that he wrote me. <laughs> and... <laughs> um, He, he, he asked. And that feeling was mutual that he answered my call, by the way. <laughs> and uh, you asked me, like, do you want to do this in the long run or do you want to just, like, sell some knives? No. And I was like, hell yeah, I want to do this in the long run. This is the, the reason I want to do this because I want to work together with somebody and not just, like, oh, yeah, I, I, I can't sell my knives on my own. Peter, please sell them for me because I can't. No. If you want to look for something like this, like from my perspective, no, not please, please don't interrupt call me. me if I'm wrong, no. just don't call them. No. Because nobody will just do the work for you, they want to work with you. No. Definitely. So. Oh, and one other thing that's super important that I see a lot of makers in the beginning doing is not really having a fixed design at the start. That consistency point is, is special there. You need to like, try and differentiate yourself and yeah, be consistent in your design and take small steps instead of big steps with that. You know, a lot of makers I see will do like mosaic Damascus one day and then like a Sanmai the other day and this kind of handle and then it's an integral bolster and like this. Try and just focus on one thing and getting it to be perfect step by step like that. And that's how you're going to build a reputation um, with consistency. That's basically, you called me because you loved mess and mice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, actually, that's the last question already. Okay. And maybe the worst one. Uh-oh. Where is the future of modern cooking? What is the future of modern cooking? And when are you gonna, finally going to buy a thousand Martin Huber knives? <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy a thousand modern, uh, Martin, Hu uh, Martin Huber knives when, yeah. There's the customer for it, <laughs> but slow burn. <laughs> um, for me, at the moment, I want to really double down on the design side of things and start kind of getting more heavily involved in that side of stuff. Um, I'm very interested in industrial design, and so for me, I would really like to start proposing designs to makers as part of that collaborative process and building kind of semi-production series or semi-custom series um, where the customer still has the option to pick and choose some details about the knife, but we play a heavier role in, in the design of that knife. So with, like, this is, this, is a, this is the design of the knife. These are the three steel options. These are the 10 handle options. And yeah. these are the 20 modifications we can do. Yeah. Okay. So it's still an individual piece at mm -hmm. the end, but it's your individual piece. Um, but, you know, we're kind of playing a heavier collaborative design role with the makers that we work with. Um, in doing that, I see us probably narrowing down the number of makers that we work with because it takes a very special relationship um, for that to happen. But ultimately, that's the direction I'd like to go in. Yeah. I'm really cold, man. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it started to get pretty dark pretty yeah. soon. Like, damn. So, so thanks for the 
watching this late night episode of the Martin Huber talk show, like it got extremely dark as you could see in the last eight minutes, nine minutes, ten minutes, something like this. Oh. So thank you, Mr. Modern Cooking. Thank you for, for coming to the Martin Huber <laughs> talk show. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna get a check it now. <laughs> All right. 20 minutes. Yeah, that. So thanks everybody for watching this small little interview. And sorry, it got so dark so early, but yeah. If you want to see more like this and if you stayed until the end, please like and subscribe and, and tell me which makers or other people that you're interested in in the knife making scene you want to see next on our small little talk show. See you guys soon. Bye. It is not true because we're not having fun. Oh, <laughs> so. Sad face. Yeah. <laughs>